uh, huge challenges coming down the road for, for the fishing industry. The European Union has agreed to implement what they call a landing obligation. In other words, we can no longer discard fish at sea. Will landing obligation and the no discard rule still be able to allow them to be a commercial success? Right now, um, with so much uncertainty, I think that is a real concern and a real worry. What we've got to do is be able to make the change from what we're doing now to the new system, but in a manner that we can all get there but still remain vibrant, economical and keep the community strong. My vessel, my crew, is going to have to make huge changes in their practices. So we've, we've got to try and design nets that are going to catch what we need to catch but at the same time allow these other fish that we don't want to escape to survive another day. What can we do to tick the boxes that keeps everybody happy, keeps me happy, keeps my, my crew and, my, and their families happy, but also keeps the seas sustainable for the next generation of fishermen. We have been in partnership with Jimmy Buchan from the RMIT on a particular trawl for uh, prawn fisheries. I think there is options in that particular fishery to be able to be highly selective at the mouth of the trawl by designing trawls that are standing low in the, the water column. Again, I have square mesh panels implemented in the, the back end of the nets that allow any fish that do enter into the net to then escape later on in the, the net. Knowledge is everything. So you, you begin to learn quite a bit about your own industry and you realise that sometimes the things that you're doing could be improved. So you already have ideas. So the next equation is we go along to the net manufacturer and say, look, this is the set of problems I think we're going to be faced with. Can you design me a net that will help me rid myself of this problem? And the, and the problem being, how can I keep the target catch, keep some of the fish, get rid of the, the ones we don't want? We are obviously going through certain trials with gear selectivity, but they are in very early stages and there has been no long-term case study done on gear selectivity to know how it's going to be really viable for a fishing vessel uh, to operate over a sustained period of time. It's definitely a partnership with the, the fishermen. When you talk with fishermen and, and pull from them as well, what they are seeing at sea, and how the gear is working, that that experience is invaluable for us as net makers when we get feedback from a fisherman and what the actual net that we've designed is doing. I think it is possible for, the, for certain sectors, namely the prawn sector, that uh, you can get clean prawns and be highly selective with getting fish out of the net. But just having clean prawns Will that make, make you have a commercially viable business? That is a high risk at the moment, and I believe that's something that the government needs to be able to help the industry on. I think switching to, to selective gear, one of two things, is it's going to be probably no longer acceptable to be discarding fish. So we've got to find a solution, but also we've, we've got to try and look for the positive and the negative. In, the, in this case, we've got to try and get a better return for the, the, the catch we do retain. And if it's in better condition, because it hasn't been disturbed with other fish. And so th there are learning things that we can do to improve the quality of the catch. And therefore, if we can, the part that we're losing can be supplemented by an, an increase in return on the, on the, the fish we are keeping, then we're, we're, we're in a good place.